Hey, good morning you guys. Facebook, YouTube, however you happen to see this video. It's Jeffrey with Howell's Carpet Cleaning here today and we are um, out doing some um, eco-friendly carpet cleaning and basically what I do is when I can I like to stage all of my equipment and everything outside so everything is easy to access. I can pick through everything and not be digging through the truck. It keeps everything organized and clean when you put things back into the truck. So what we're doing is our three phase cleaning today, but I also want to preface that this video is going out to Ryan of Bristle Clean in uh, Bristleville, Mass or Ohio. So um, specifically, this is for eco-friendly uh, carpet cleaning in Warren, Ohio. So um, that's where this video is actually going to be targeted at, and that's what I'm going to be dedicating this video to. So. As long as I keep saying eco-friendly carpet cleaning and how green it is and all the chemicals that we're using are non-toxic and very green and friendly and all that. Safe for children, pets, wild teenagers that act like animals, blah, 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 blah. Then Google is just going to pick up on all those keywords so that when someone is searching for eco-friendly or green carpet cleaning, bam, we've got the first notice because our content is so rich with... Uh, eco-friendly carpet cleaning that it has nothing else better to do but to serve up our green carpet cleaning video so um what we've got here is um my eco-friendly stuff um i've got um three jugs and right now those are just water because i don't know how much i'm actually going to use but they're prepared and then we'll just make up the, the product as we go along and what I'm going to be using, and what I have been using that works very good, it's very green, it's this Master Blend Soap Free Solution. Um, it's not necessarily what Ryan is using, but I'm sure that he is using something very green and something similar to it. I mean, this stuff is gluten free, man. You can put this stuff on your food. Ooh, yeah, add a little bit of extra flavoring there. But then we're also boosting that with... Uh, the detonator product back away which um, those of you who know is uh, about 15 to 20 percent peroxide and one thing that you can do to test the strength of peroxide if you're curious as to how strong your peroxide is compared to another is that you can just dump a little bit on the concrete and the more it foams the stronger that it is so with that said, we're going to be hopping on along with our three-phase cleaning. Our three-phase cleaning consists of a good pre-vacuum here to get as much dry debris out of the soil as possible. Um, moving on to phase two, it actually happens in two stages. Um, a Part A being the application of our pre-spray solution with our multi-sprayer here. And then we move on to part B, which is agitation. And today we are going to be agitating with the CRB. Um, it does a really good job. And for those of you who are wondering, yeah, um, this product that I'm using is actually VLM product. However, it can be used for both uh, VLM style cleaning as well as um, truck mounted steam cleaning or hot water extraction. And basically what that means is that there is no soap residue or anything in the carpeting that needs to be extracted out. So it can be left in the carpeting. However, it's not like an encapsulation cleaning because it doesn't. It, the product that I use is a no. Hey, sorry about that. Got interrupted by an incoming call, but we got that out of the way by now. So, anyways, um, where I ended up was that we are not using a crystallizing product. Um, I do use crystallizing products in some cases when we are doing a rinse. However, I generally do not use crystallizing product because they're a little bit more expensive to go 100% uh, end cap. Um, but anyways, with that said, um, after we're done with phase two, we move on to phase three, which is when we fire up our truck and we give things a quick steam out. And yeah, we are using about 500 PSI of water, um, at about 235 to 245 degree temperature. So it does a real good job of giving everything a real good steaming and a good rinse. So we're neutralizing, sanitizing, deodorizing, and getting the carpets as clean as we possibly can. 
So we're inside, let's take a quick look at what we're going to be cleaning. We are in the basement, and again, like I said, there are two bedrooms, the stairway and the downstairs area here. So we're probably looking about 750 square feet or so. Um, you see it's not too soiled in here, but as we get into where the couches and stuff were primarily at, as you can see, there was probably something here, and I don't know what maybe a couch along here and then we got this nasty foot traffic and everything so we may use a sodium carbonate peroxide um i'm thinking yeah it might work i'm uh, just fine um so what that does is i have stress tested that stuff and um the sodium carbonate um solution that soap free stuff on its own is pretty good for uh upholstery cleaning by itself but not so great with just pure, you know, carpet cleaning. But with the addition of peroxide, it really seems to uh, give it a major boost. And I've been extremely satisfied with the results that I've been getting. In fact, it should clean this up all well, really good. So at least we got a good before um, picture. And then afterwards, we'll look to see what we got. So we're moving on into phase one right now with a quick vacuum. But you can see... There isn't really much we can do in here because this is where everything is being stored. But I will probably move a couple of these boxes and stuff out of the way just so that we can at least hit the, the main traffic area through here. So anyways, there you have it. Moving on to phase one. We have just completed phase one with the pre-vacuum. We've gone through, we picked up all as much dried debris from the carpeting as we possibly could. And what that does is that keeps it out of our filters and the truck and everything. In fact, I saw some uh, conversation going on on Facebook. A guy was wanting to get an attachment. It sounded like a wand for vacuuming the floor using this truck mount, which isn't a great idea because uh, not only are you having to empty out your filter much more often you know you're not really going to be saving yourself any time by the additional work that you're going to be adding on to the other end it's also your i believe that the blower is meant to have liquid running through it um it has to do with keeping it cool it just has to do with the way that it's designed to to run so um i'm not sure if vacuum up dry debris is going to potentially cause any problems um you know causing things to wear out more a lot more quickly drying um lubricated and rubber gaskets and that sort of stuff that need to stay um somewhat pliable i'm not sure if if dry dust is going to cause stuff to become more brittle before their time i really don't know what all is involved in there but i do know that you're far better off just getting a vacuum cleaner and vacuuming. Um, in here, not a whole lot of carpeting. Carpets weren't extremely soiled, at least they didn't look like it. But um, we still were able to pull out about 15 to 20 percent of a ba Kirby bag of just uh, dust and stuff like that. So, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's actually pretty good because then that just keeps it out of our truck when we do the steam cleaning and of course we're not dealing with carpet fibers and hairs and stuff like that uh, and you know also when you're agitating with a crb it helps to remove some of those loose fibers as well so that you're not um plugging up your your filters when you're doing your your steam cleaning and that is what i really appreciate because i can go through and i can do you know a half a dozen jobs or so and not really and have at least half if not 75 percent less uh 
debris is being picked up that I'm having to uh, clean out and get rid of. So I can work a full day easily without clearing out my uh, filter basket, which is pretty nice, you know. Um, it takes a little bit more work in the long run, but I honestly feel that it does a far superior job, and that's why uh, customers keep getting me back. Um, this job here is a Facebook job that I got. Um, I have a very I'm highly uh, uh, recommended, I guess, on Facebook, so <laughs> I have uh, some high expectations to meet. So as long as you just do your best work in every single job um, to the best of your ability, go up and beyond the call of duty and be awesome at your work, you're going to be get, getting callbacks. And not only that, you're going to be recommended to people down the street, um, People are going to be talking about you at their work, and they're going to be getting calls from all over the place. And you never know where the next call is coming from. Um, I diverse myself over Facebook, over um, Yelp, over Google, over YouTube, all over the place. And to be honest, I have no idea where the next job is coming from. Sometimes I get two calls from Yelp. Sometimes I'll have three or four calls from Google. Sometimes... I'll uh, have a Facebook job or a couple Facebook jobs coming in, and um, you really, you honestly do not know, so um, put yourself out there, build yourself a reputation, and do an awesome job. Okay, we're moving on to Phase 2, Part A, with the soil, soil suspension process. We are going to be doing the application of our free spray right now. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to pretty much do this whole section here and then once it's down I'm going to go ahead and agitate it the CRB. So we're actually going to break this up in piece by piece. We're going to be doing this area here. Um, we'll probably break this up into two quadrants here. One being this main area, the area other being here, and then we'll treat the two bedrooms separately as well. And what that does is that just allows the... Uh, the application to be as wet as possible and as active as it possibly can and then we'll use a CRV just to give it a good agitation and it'll sit and dwell there in the carpeting and then if we miss any spots you know we can easily go back over it so um, what I it really depends on the situation I like breaking it up like that because it allows you to um, be a little bit more thorough and um, a little bit more attentive to spots and problematic areas like that there. <clears throat> it's not a burn. I think that's oil or something that they got down there. It's probably furniture or something heavy had to have been there. I don't know what that is. Um, maybe it's it's rust. So we'll just play around with it and see what happens. It could be that uh, peroxide and that cleaner will will get it up sufficiently, but we'll, we'll play around with it. And everything else that may be urine or something from a pet, um, everything else should be treated absolutely wonderful with our cleaning solution. Okay, phase 2B, what this is going to do, this is going to agitate the cleaning solution that we just put down into the carpeting. And what we have there, you can see the blue brush under there, there's actually two of them under there, and they're kind of rotating counterclockwise to each other. Counterclockwise to each other? I don't know if that's in... They're counter-rotating from each other, I should say that. So it's gently uplifting on the carpet, um, piling... Um, however, we don't really have any pile in here because we're dealing with Berber. And, but it will go through. It will pick up lint and all that kind of stuff as it's agitating. Um, a lot of people like to run the CRB before and after. Um, I, I prefer to use it for at the application process. might be backwards from some people because they like to run it before they apply the, the pre-spray down. 
Um, however, I like to use it for agitation purposes because we do a very good thorough vacuum anyway. So anything else that we pick up with the CRB is just kind of the icing on the cake. However, if we were dealing with a bunch of animal hair, um, that would be a different situation where we would probably be running the, uh, the CRB um, possibly prior to a vacuum just to get up as much animal hair beforehand and then vacuum and then you know go back with the regular cleaning whether or not there's going to be any deodorizing involved in that process or not you kind of have to play it by ear and see what you're going to be doing so you got to be really dynamic and kind of pick and choose what you're going to be doing for each particular job it's not a one size fits all step a b c d e f g bam 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 like some uh cheaper uh, hacks do to get your carpets clean. They just uh, follow the same formula regardless of what they're doing. And I kind of refer to that as uh, pounding a square peg through a round hole because it's not necessarily what you need to do. You need a peg that is um, that is pliable and will actually fit through the, the pro do all the process properly. If I was to use an analogy, it's kind of stupid, but uh, Anyways, you get the point. So just pick the right tools, pick the right chemical, pick the right processes, um, apply them at the right time, and you'll get a perfectly clean um, scenario, scenario every single time. And that's what sets you apart from everybody else. Okay, we finish up the uh, soil, soil suspension process of phase two with both parts A and B being uh, application pre-spray and agitation. And as you can see here, this looks 99% uh, better than what it did. And this was just with the application of our pre-spray. We haven't actually extracted any of this yet. Now, because we are using a soap-free uh, product, this would be considered like a VLM um, style cleaning if we had just left it like this. Um, however, we're going to take it one step further. But a lot of your cleaners like Heaven's Best and all them guys who are using uh, an OP machine, an oscillating pad machine, um, they would get a, a little bit more of it out. Um, they would blend this in quite a bit better, I would imagine. But um, they're basically doing the same thing and using a similar cleaner and then just leaving it like this without any extraction. Uh, it looks great. Um, however, we're going to take it one step further. But once this did all dry and blend back in and everything, all of the carpeting everywhere would look absolutely wonderful. Um, but we're going to go wonderful times two by doing a one-up and doing a steam out in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and prepare for phase three with the steam out, run our lines and hoses and everything in. And as you can see, we already have our corner guard strategically placed where they need to be to protect the walls from grinding and tearing. And that is something that our professional carpet cleaning company is going to do for you because they care about your property and they invest in the right equipment to get the job done safely. Uh, these corner guards are probably about 25 bucks a piece. Um, depending on probably quantity and where you get them. Um, these are the duck ones. They do have some cheaper knockoffs that are very flimsy and will break on you. So uh, as a carpet cleaner, you're better off investing in good equipment that is going to last. Now, um, my biggest problem then is just making sure I pick them up from the job. I know that I have steer hooks. I've gone through a couple of them. Um, I've only lost, I think, well, maybe one stair hook on a job, and basically what that does is that it will hook on to one of these to prevent um, gravity from dragging your hose down the stairways, and that just helps to uh, anchor your, your lines and stuff in so that they're not moving around on you. It also helps to prevent the sawing away at the, the corners because, um, you know, you're anchoring the hose so it's not moving around. So, um, back to quality products, I guess. You want to make sure you have quality products because in the long run, 
they are going to last longer and um, after a few jobs you get a, an idea and you have everything that you need and before long you are picking everything up and doing mental checklists in your head without even thinking about what all equipment you need to bring in and all this and that so um, that's one thing that helps you out as an owner operator is that you're able to do a much more sufficient job for the customer um, you're losing less equipment on the job because an hourly employee is a lot less uh, careful about the equipment and things that he's using um, dragging hoses down concrete streets and tearing them up and ruining the integrity of them and all that sort of stuff there's a nice pile of nasty that we uh, were able to pull out of the carpeting down here of course you can't really see anything on the carpet because it's nice Berber carpets but it uh, everything hides all kinds of gunk so if we were to go over them again, we'd probably pick up a little bit more, but um, yeah, for now that is a, a good amount, and we'll probably pick up a little bit more with the steam out with the uh, our carpet cleaning wand and powerful truck mounted steam cleaning. Okay, we're preparing for phase three. We're running our hoses and things through the house. Now, this is our indoor hose. What we do is the 50 foot section that does not go outdoors. It does not touch the ground. It does not bring dirt or anything else into the house. So what we do is we take it to the farthermost place that we're gonna be cleaning and we bring it out towards the door. Um, this hose gets wiped down periodically, probably at least once a week or more, just to, to keep it as clean as possible. And um, what this does is, especially in the winter months when it's wet and nasty out, it just keeps extra the debris from coming inside your house. So when you're uh, seeing a carpet cleaner wrapping up hose and stuff and dragging it um, to the parking lots or wherever, you just have to cringe and hope that it's not coming into your house. Okay, so what I did is that the water is pushing about 220 right now. And I dropped the PSI down to about 250 because we did do mechanical agitation to loosen up that dirt. And because it's a basement, we don't want to totally soak it or anything. So it does kind of help to use less water if possible. But um, just going back, just to reiterate, we did mechanical agitate. So what mechanical agitation does is that it loosens that dirt up for us so we're not having to rely upon as much pressure of water doing that for us. Finally, we're moving on to the stairways in phase three, getting these all cleaned up. Now, this is what I vary um, quite a bit differently from other carpet cleaners because I like to use an upholstery tool when uh, doing stairways. I feel that I have more control cleaning and then it gets a far superior job. I mean, I've tried many, many different kinds of stair tools. Um, some of them just spray water all over the place and they're difficult to use. Um, I haven't really used many of those spinner type of tools that spin and twirl, you know, make it a little bit easier to do the work for you. But um, I still feel my personal preference is with this tool here because it is a small hand tool. It allows you to adequately address both the, the step and the riser and get a very good cleaning job. And it focuses all of your vacuum suction through a narrow opening. So you get a little bit more. 